or chemicals. Okay, the composition range for so-called spinodal decomposition. Let's look at a binary system with a miscibility gap. What are we looking at? Temperature versus concentration. This is essentially phase diagram. And we said, okay, we are only looking at the low temperature portion. Above this TC, we have single phase alpha. Below this phase boundary line, we have alpha 1 plus alpha 2. This is what people say, the miscibility gap, which means if we have any composition, we cool it very slowly to here. On the equilibrium, I should have how many phases? Two phases, one is alpha 1, one is alpha 2. I label them both as alpha because those two phases would always have the same crystal structure but they would have different lattice parameter and the different uh, composition. Make sense? Okay, so this is our phase diagram with a miscibility gap. And then, if we, for any given system composition x0, for any given system composition of x0, if we cool from T1, temperature, higher temperature, greater than what? Critical temperature, which is the top of this miscibility gap, to T2, which is smaller than this miscibility gap, okay? For our composition X0, I cool it from T1 above the miscibility gap to T2 below the miscibility gap. Make sense? If we cool it very, very slowly, what would happen? We would go from single phase to two phases. Make sense? Alpha 1 plus alpha 2, if I'm here. And then, if we have these type of phase diagram, and from what you learn in thermodynamics, people can construct so-called a Gibbs free energy composition curve. We are interested at T2 temperature. If I'm asking you to draw the Gibbs free energy versus composition curve at T2 temperature, at here, T2 temperature, which is above or below Tc? Below Tc, you draw it here. How would you draw the Gibbs free energy composition curve? Because of the shape of the phase diagram, people would draw it something like this, at T2. At T2 temperature, we would have this fluctuated uh, Gibbs free energy versus composition curve. Okay, our x0 is still x0. Make sense? And then at T2 temperature, the isothermal line would intercept with the so called, what does this solid line represent? so-called phase boundary, the isothermal in line with the phase boundary line, that gives us the so-called equilibrium composition for the alpha 1 and alpha 2. Make sense? These two points represent the equilibrium composition at uh, what temperature? T2 temperature. Okay, these two. And the uh, corresponding composition would be x1 for here x2 for the other one. Make sense? And uh, if we projected these two onto the Gibbs free energy curve, they would correspond to roughly here. And the exact location of these two points would be determined by the so-called common tangent. Make sense? That's what you learned in thermodynamics. The common tangent line would tell you the exact composition. Or put another way, the phase boundary is essentially will be the, the tangent point. Make sense? And on one side, mu A eq means what? The chemical potential for element A under equilibrium condition for T2 temperature. Mu B EQ means chemical potential for element B at under equilibrium at T2 temperature. Make sense? 
So these are the two points that we got. Then if our initial composition is between the x1 and x2, that's what we draw. If our initial composition is between x1 and x2, what would happen? We would go from one phase to the two phases, right? We would go from alpha phase to alpha to alpha one plus alpha two, two phases, and this should occur. On the other hand, you would notice on this curve there will be these two points. From here, where I'm illustrating, it's concave up or ends up. This is also concave up, but in between is concave down. So these two points kind of represent the second derivative equals zero, or the so-called inflection point. Make sense? Inflection points. The so-called inflection points. Okay. In between these would be concave down. Outside will be concave up. And here is the second derivative equals to be zero. And if we projected these onto here, we would get additional two points. Make sense? On the Gibbs free energy curve, because that is concave up portion, concave down portion, the inflection points, we can determine those inflection points. And between the inflection points, the curvature is like this, concave down. And our composition x0, if it is between these inflection points, if our composition is what? Between the inflection points, which means it's in the concave down section. If x0 further satisfies this one, the second derivative is smaller than zero. Make sense? If our x0 is in between the two inflection points, our second derivative is smaller than zero, okay? Then you will notice and we quench from T1 to T2, from T1 to T2, initially, this point represents the so-called initial system free energy. When I quench from T1 to T2, this point represents the initial system energy because initially the system is what structure? Alpha structure, FCC, let's say, single phase, right, here. But then, under equilibrium condition, do you see it has to be become this point? The system free energy has to drop to here. Determined by the common tangent, it has to become here. So initial, it's at G0, finally it's at G equilibrium. This becomes the very large driving force for the system to go from what? One single phase alpha into two phases of alpha one plus alpha two. From zero to here. Very large driving force. And not only the system free energy G0 initially is much higher than equilibrium. And not only that, you would find if this is my initial composition, I have a so-called local composition fluctuation. My material decomposes into a one that is a little bit uh, less rich, the other one a little bit richer. The system goes from one point to two portion. Do you see that? The system going from one uniform to two. One is here, one is here. Okay? In this process, in this process, going from one to two, the system energy would lower a little bit from here to a little bit lower. Do you see that? From here to a little bit lower. And this process, the so-called slight composition fluctuation, 
going from one uniform composition now to two composition. One is a little bit leaner in solute B. One, the other is a little bit richer in solute B. Going from one uniform to a little, one little bit leaner, one little bit richer. The actually the process is what? Increasing energy or decreasing energy? Decrease. Decreasing energy. Okay. But remember, this little bit leaner and a little bit richer, are they very close to the initial composition or very far away? They're very close. As a result, if you are going to expect the lattice parameter should be very close or very different. Close. Because they are very close in composition and very close in, in lattice parameter, in the beginning process of this fluctuation, you can now tell the interface between what? Between the linear portion and the richer portion. Make sense? Going from one composition to two composition. But because those two are very close in composition, the lattice parameter difference is very, very small, which means the interface, you cannot really see it. You cannot really distinguish it, which is very, very different from when silver coming out from copper, the lattice parameter is too large. It will not try to fit at all. Make sense? So this is the process that people call spinodal decomposition. Going from one phase to two phases. In the beginning stage, you cannot really tell how exactly it's happening. Even though it's going from one to two, there will be no distinct interface. And the initial system is here, a little bit fluctuated is here. It's a, always a so-called spontaneous decomposition. Because there's no interface involved, there's no barrier to overcome, it's always so-called downhill in free energy. It's a spontaneous process decomposition. And then we will talk about this a little bit lower. It will be the diffusion involved in this process will be so-called uphill diffusion uphill diffusion, not downhill diffusion, not the natural part. The, the solute atom actually wants to go to the one that is even richer. We'll talk about this a little bit later. And the, the system would always reach equilibrium. Start from this one, separate, separate, essentially, eventually goes to here. Always reach equilibrium. It cannot stop at the so-called metastable state. Okay? And then, if we do this at all these different temperatures, we would have this dashed part, this dashed line. All this dashed line corresponds to the second derivative equals zero at different temperature. If we connect all those lines together, that would have this dashed line. And this dashed line represents so-called a chemical spinodal composition boundary, which means if the initial composition is between the dashed portion, the material going from one phase alpha to alpha plus alpha one plus alpha beta would go through the so-called spinodal decomposition process, would go through the uphill diffusion. It will be a spontaneous process that does not involve the creation of the in distinct interface at the beginning stage of the transformation. Okay, let's stop here.